Hello, everyone. Uh, so I came here to talk about uh, packaging Docker. So I've been working on that packaging Docker for Debian. Uh, and, um, and so I came to, to give a bit of feedback uh, on, this, on this task, basically. Um, so first, a bit of uh, introduction about myself. I'm Arnaud. <laughs> and uh, so I've been uh, working on Linux and open source stuff for, for a while. It's my job. I've been using Debian for a very long time as well. Uh, but I'm not a Debian com contributor, so basically um, uh, it's kind of new for me to do all this packaging and to, to work with Debian. So what I mean by that is that I was very much the wrong person for the job. <laughs> but uh, anyway, and why did I do that? Why did I work on this package? Uh, so I work for Collabora, and uh, at Collabora we use Docker like a lot of people nowadays, we use Docker in our infrastructure, and we also use Docker for our customers. Um, we also use Debian in our infrastructure and for our customers. So working on the Docker, Docker package in Debian just makes make sense for us. Um, and the situation with Docker, I don't know if you're really familiar with that, but uh, the, the Debian package for Docker was, uh, the situation was quite bad because there was uh, no, no package in stretch right now in the Debian stable. There is no, no installed candidate for Docker. And in unstable, the package was stuck in unstable. There was no package in testing either because the package was kind of broken. And uh, the package was also like one year old already, kind of outdated, not really maintained. So there was the situation was bad, and there was really some, some work to be done there. And, uh, and so because I started at Collabora, I had a bit of like, free time to, to start with. So, so that was my, uh, one of my tasks there. It was to work on this package and try to improve the situation. Um, so first thing, uh, you maybe don't know what are the packages for Debian. If you want to install Docker on Debian, what are the packages? Uh, there are two packages. You can install from the Debian repository, but you can also install Docker from the Docker website. And if you go in the install instruction on Docker website, they will direct you to their own repository and make you install it from their repository. And so it's important to, to understand the difference between this, uh, these two packages. So uh, first, just some basics. You need to, to, to know to understand what's going on. So Docker is written in, in Go. Uh, everybody know about this language, I guess. Uh, Go is a compiled language, and uh, it produces statically linked binaries. So all this talk, we're not talking about shared libraries here. It's not, uh, it's not the topic, but we are really talking about build dependency. It's a compiled language, so we need to meet all the build dependency be before we can build a big package like Docker. So that's really what we're talking about. So let me try to explain the difference between the two packages. So docker.io, it's uh, the name of the package in Debian. I call it the official Debian package because it comes from the official Debian repositories. So this is one package. And the second package is named docker-ce. And this package, I say an official package because it's, uh <coughs> it's not shipped by Debian. It's shipped by Docker themselves. So one of the first differences is that there is no source package. Uh, for, for this package, you can install a binary, but you don't have the source package. However, the packaging files are available on, uh, on, on GitHub. So it's, it's not like there's nothing heavy, go heavy going on. You can really see what's, how to build the package. And you can also rebuild the package yourself, and all the code is, is open source. So that's, that, but OK, that's the first difference. So then, really. <laughs> So both packages will make you install Docker. So what is really the, the difference between both? You know, what should you install on your, on your computer? So the most important thing is about the build dependencies. So Docker CE, which is uh, the, the package from Docker themselves, uh, they, they get the build dependency from the vendor directory. So it means that, they, so it's a very common practice in Golang. What they do is that they they embed all the build dependency inside the, the source code. So basically, I can show you that, I guess, quickly, in case you're not familiar. Maybe, maybe most people know that. I don't know. <coughs> this is, for example, uh, the Docker engine. It's named Mobi, but anyway. 
these are the source code, okay? And then you get a directory, it's the vendor directory. And then you click here. <coughs> oh, sorry. And what you get here is that all the build dependencies are here, are in tree. And you go github.com and then you get all the build dependency here. So they keep a local copy of the, of the libraries, the libraries they use. So, and that's what you get when you install the, the package from Docker CE. That's how it, it's built. It's built with all the dependency in trees. So it's very easy for them to build this package. They don't have any build dependency to, to solve. While the docker.io package, it's more, it's the usual way Debian do the, handle the libraries and the dependency. It means that what they do, what we do when we build the package in Debian, we don't use this vendor directory. We discard this directory that contains all the build dependency and we fetch the build dependency from other Debian packages. So it means that as a packager, we have to handle and maintain all this build, all the dependency tree for the build of Docker. And that is a very big difference when it comes to packages. So just to give you a bit of numbers, uh, I don't know if you know clock, it's count line of code. It's a little utility that gives you some quick numbers that can be useful. So if you run that in the Docker engine and you exclude that the first line, you exclude the vendor directory. You get 180,000 lines of code. 100,000, uh, yeah, 100, 180,000 lines of code, basically. And that is only the source code of Docker itself. But then if you add, if you look at the vendor directory, you've got 600,000 li li lines of code, a bit more. So it's like three times more of, f compared to the number of lines of code in Docker. So it's, uh, so you really get all the build dependencies there, it's, and as you can see, it's a lot, of course. And, uh, and to give you other numbers that are more interesting now, so if you look at the Docker that CE package from docker.com, they have 18 build dependencies, which is like, okay. So it's kind of easy for them to package. And if you look at the docker.io package now, the one in Debian, we've got 120 uh, build dependency, and we have to handle that and to manage that. And every new version, we have to bump a lot of dependencies. So that's that's a lot of work, and that explains why, if you install the Docker package from Docker.com, every month you get a new version of the package because they have they don't have work to do for packaging. So so you get a new version every month. But then if you get the package from Debian. As a, as a packager, we have a lot of work to do to maintain this package. And that's the reason why, uh, for a while, this package was quite of unmaintained and very much outdated compared to the docker.com package. So that's where all the work is for packaging Docker. That's what makes it complicated and challenging. And uh, yeah, that's it. So now that you know what, it's, what the job is about for packaging Docker, I will now try to show you where are the challenges and what, what makes it complicated. Um, so the first complicated thing <laughs> for me when I started working on that was to understand what to package and what not to package. Because the Docker workflow is a bit, uh, it, it's hard to get what's going on sometimes. So for example, you've got the Docker CE repository, which is a top repository that contain every, that contains basically where Docker is, is built. And you got this repository and you go in components and then you get CLI and Engine. CLI is a command line interface and Engine is the Engine. And so when I started, I thought, okay, these are like two different components, so maybe it's better to package them independently. So it just happens that uh, the Docker Engine, what you have to figure out is actually the repositories at github.com, Mobi, Mobi, because they kind of changed the name and rebranded it under another name. Uh, so here it is, and then the Docker command line interface is at docker slash CLI. Okay, and then when you go there and have a look at it, you realize that, uh, let's look, okay, we're inside Mobi project, uh, let's have a look at the release. And the last release was made in June 2017. So obviously you don't really know what to package here because the last release was a long time ago and they don't release anymore. So what you discover after that is that, so basically what happened is that in the end you get to know the workflow and what happened is that, okay, they have one repository for the engine, one repository for the command line interface. 
And these two repositories get merged in the Docker CE super repository with a custom tool. It's not Git submodels or stuff like this. It's really they merge with a custom tool. They kind of copy the code there, and then they cherry pick some commits so that in the end, you cannot say when you get a release of Docker CE, you don't know, it doesn't correspond to one particular commit of the engine of one particular commit of the Docker command line interface. So you cannot package Mobi, and you cannot really package Docker command line interface either separately and make something modular. So that was my first attempt, and it didn't work. So I understood it was really not the right thing to do it. So okay, I had to package Docker CE. Then I kept going, and then I say, okay, because I didn't want to package immediately the big Docker repository because it was very complicated. So I wanted to split this task in some smaller task and easier to do. So I tried to package. So there was two big dependencies for Docker. One is run C, and the other is container D. I found out that uh, run C is very well maintained in, in Debian. There is a package up, up to date and maintained. Okay, and then I found that container D was very much outdated and nobody was taking care of this package. So I thought, okay, let's, let's, let's package that, you know? I found my starting point on this task at last. And I spent a lot of uh, days working on that, packaging container D, bumping the package, and, uh, and I ended up with a, a proper package. And, uh, and the sad thing is that in the end, this package is not used. Actually, we don't use it. All this work, I just discarded it for two reasons. So that's one of the reasons, one of the things that make packaging Docker complicated. It's about the versions and the way they handle the version. When I was working on that, I found that Docker required a commit from a date between the version 1.0 and 1.0.1 of ContainerD. And I wanted to package, I didn't want to package a random snapshot of ContainerD, I wanted to package a tag, a release. So I packaged 1.0.1. And later on down the way, I, I found out that I couldn't build Docker against this version because, okay, Docker takes this commit, but it, I found out too late that Docker used the commit from the, not from the stable branch. They use a commit from the unstable branch at this point. So I discovered that I just packaged something that was unusable. I couldn't use container there and build Docker against it. And that's a common practice with Docker as they always for all the dependencies they use, they will often use a random snapshot because often in Go you don't have many tags or release. So that was the first mistake. And uh, the second one is that I found until the end that anyway, I could never use, I could never build Docker against uh, container day because of circular dependencies. And that's really, again, one of the big issues is that uh, all the top level dependencies of Docker they all depend on Docker and Docker dependence. And, and, and all these big blocks on the top, they all depend on each other and it's all plagued with a circular dependency. And it's actually, it's not possible to package it independently. And I don't know how, because in the existing package that was already in Debian, they managed to do different packages, but there are circular dependency. I have no idea how they managed to build that. But the thing is that after one year without maintaining the package, I just couldn't. I, I couldn't uh, bump the different pieces because of the circular dependency. So in the end, the solution, so yeah. So that is what, that is the picture you get from maybe the Docker blog, but that's really what you get when you are under the hood. It's not that clean. And these are different pieces of, um, of Docker. All of them are in a different Git repository. But in the end, all these pieces that are across here, these are things that you cannot, we cannot package it independently and we don't do that anymore. So now it's a bit technical, but it's the interesting part is that we solve this with, uh, by using multi upstream tarball in the package. So that's on the right, that's what you can see on the tracker page of docker.io. And uh, what it shows is that when we build Docker, actually we fetch different repositories. We fetch container day, Docker distribution, Docker Go events, Docker Go metrics, Docker lib network, Docker swarm kits. All these elements, they seem to be modular, but they are not modular at all. And we just cannot package it. So by using this multi upstream tarball now, we get to have a package that is easier to maintain and, uh, and, that, and that doesn't have this circular dependency. So now we've got something that is uh, looking a bit better. 
And uh, quickly, I don't have much time anymore. So after solving all that and knowing basically how to package this big thing, the other thing that really makes it complicated is dealing with dependency in Golang when you do the package is very difficult. Uh, one of the things is that in Go, you don't really know what are the required version for dependency. Most of the time, either you don't know, you know that you need this dependency, but you don't know which required version. And, <coughs> and maybe if you're lucky, you know actually that this particular version works. But you don't know if a version before or after will work. And we can have only, have only one package in Debian, so you often you cannot get exactly the same version as upstream use. And, uh, and you don't know if it works or not until you build. So packaging Docker, it's just about building and see if it works or not. And you have nothing better than that. You don't have strict requirements. And often the libraries don't use semantic versioning. They don't do any versioning. So you are really like working blindly there. So it's a lot of time just building, trying, and um, crossing your fingers. It's a lot of time wasted, honestly, when you do all this packaging. It's very annoying. But yeah, that's, that's how it is. One of the big complicated things also is that we cannot have two concurrent versions of the same library installed. So right now, we packaging the latest version of Docker, and, uh, and it depends on systemd version 18 or 17, systemd version 17, the Go package of systemd. And, uh, and in Debian, we have the version 16. So if we bump it to the version 17, we break another package that cannot work with the version 17. But if we don't, then we cannot build Docker. And we can only have one library installed in Debian in the packages. So at some point, we are in bump into this limitation. And it ends up that we still have to keep some vendoring because uh, so right now in this the next version of Docker, we still have to keep inside embedded this version of Go systemd because uh, we cannot upgrade it without breaking the rest of the, the world. And we can just wait until other packages catch up. And hopefully, we can bump this library. But uh, it turns out that packaging uh, and removing every vendor libraries the way we wish we could do it turns out that it's not possible, and often here and there we, we, we cannot. So we are not there. We, we, we don't reach what we really, it's not as good as we would like to be these packages. Yeah, another complicated in thing in Golan is that you don't even know sometimes what's a library. There's this, sometimes there's a big application, and the source code is an application, and it's also a library, but you don't know only some directories in the source code are meant to be a library, and there's no definition of that. It's very, it's very loose. So, so in the end, we had this. At some point, we had a, at, we had a circular dependency, and it just turned out that uh, it's because we didn't package the library properly, but we really had to. And and it's really about uh, you. You don't have this definition, so. Once again, it's the kind of thing you have to try, you have to experiment, and, uh, and in the end, you're never quite sure you're doing the right thing. So it's also one complicated thing. So just to finish, so it was maybe a bit confused. Um, just, yeah, so this situation could improve and will improve. We're really much waiting for that, because uh, Golang is going through, uh, it's a young language, you know, it's quite young, and the ecosystem is evolving, and hopefully in the right direction. So we have Vigo, which is a version Go, and it's basically Go is introducing built in the language uh, the support for versions for libraries, which is not there yet. But this is really now uh, something that is coming, and hopefully it will really improve the ecosystem and and the way Debian wants to package things will be much more easier. And uh, hopefully, yeah, things are difficult now, but uh, it will be, be it will hopefully be better and better. So yeah, so we have hope for the future. Thank you very much, uh, and a uh, question if you want. You're welcome to ask questions now. Uh, so it seems to me, um, you know, I haven't really poked Go a lot. It seems to me that when they were setting up the language and the environment, they made a a lot of terrible decisions that they really, that anyone experienced with packaging or, or the systems or distributions that wouldn't have made? Was, was there a reason they made all these 
terrible decisions? Uh, have they said or is it just a thing that happened? I don't know. Well, I'm probably not the right person to answer this question. But I think uh, I think they really iterate on the language and uh, and seems to be kind of open to experimentation. Because, for example, at the beginning there's really maybe no support for dependency in the language. And yeah, I think it looks really like it's a... a, a it's on purpose. They don't want. It's a difficult uh, topic to solve the dependency. A lot of languages get it wrong, or so maybe they just decided, okay, we don't do anything, and we just let the community find out their own solution. And after a while, we see what what appears, what are the different solutions that people come up with, and maybe we start to build now a, a solution inside the language based on what other communities have have done. You know, so they, it's kind of open to experimentation and iterating like this. That's the feeling I have. And um, yeah, so I think it's still a, a young language and a young ecosystem. And yeah. Hey, uh, thanks for giving this talk because I'm particularly interested in Docker and Kubernetes and just okay. uh, Go apps on uh, Stretch. Um, so because of the lack of support that your presentation discussed, um, I was kind of pushed to Core OS uh, because that's a Linux distro that more or less has just a Kubernetes cluster that works out of the box. Um, now, my question is, is this a tenable strategy for packaging? You just spin up a core OS instance and look at their Docker packages and then essentially like try to copy it. Uh, what, what we're doing, you mean? I just mean, is, is that a viable packaging strategy, to at least for a starting point? For what, what we're doing for Docker? Yeah, it, essentially like yeah. Spin, up, spin up Docker or, or like spin up CoreOS or like Red Hat or something that has it sort of pre-installed and then just kind of look at the versions of their dependencies and kind of copy it and see what happens. Is that viable? Yeah, yeah. We, we, we don't really... That we don't copy anything. That's what Docker does. That's the way, and it's not only Docker. It's uh, in uh, the Golang ecosystem. They, they, they snapshot their dependency and they bring it in like, tree. Yeah, I don't uh, mean okay. like copy as in CP. I mean copy as in like copy paste versions and stuff like that. Uh, I was thinking about it as essentially a shortcut. So, so you mean if, uh, the way they do it, if it's viable or yeah? Yeah, they, if yeah. you just create, if you just initialize like a core OS instance on a Linux, but on a, on just a random machine and look at the versions that that uses because you know it works mm. and then try to just copy paste some of that versioning information into your package declarations. Well, we, I, I, I'm not sure to exactly get the Okay, the, the no, I mean, it's, it's definitely kind of Sorry. hacky, weird. Uh, Sure. Hi, um, I'm from Ubuntu. I'm from Ubuntu, and uh, we also have Docker packages, and those are devs. So uh, you can take a look at the Ubuntu packaging of uh, Docker as well. Yeah. Uh, the problem with CoreOS or Fedora or something else that they have very different policies uh, than Debian. Uh, Ubuntu's policies are probably more likely to match. So yeah, we can copy and we can share, and I'm involved in Go packaging in Ubuntu and in Debian as well. So we don't just take everything away and uh, don't look at anything, um, but uh, the challenges uh, he mentioned should be solved um, in Debian. Actually, the, yeah, the Ubuntu package was also part of the inspiration to build, uh, because the multi-upstream table, which is a very good solution to solve some of the problem we have, actually came from the Ubuntu package. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, what if there's no more questions? I think. Thank you very much for being here, and feel free to get in touch later on to keep on discussing all these issues. And we have a bird of feather about Go packaging uh, later on this afternoon if you're interested in so Go, Go packaging in, in Debian. Thank you.